Hello and welcome everyone. Welcome to Live from the Eagle's Nest at the National Conservation Training Center. We're looking at a live view of a large bald eagle's nest here at the National Conservation Training Center. We're located near Shepherdstown, West Virginia in the beautiful eastern panhandle of West Virginia, very close to the Potomac River. In the background, you see the buildings of the National Conservation Training, the Training Center. This is the home of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and our main training facility for the entire country. We have people from all over the United States and around the world come here for classes each week uh, in and out throughout the year. We've got a beautiful uh, over 500 acre campus and about 20 years ago, in 2003 to be exact, uh, a pair of bald eagles built a nest here. And so we've been watching them ever since uh, and we really enjoy it. And people from all over the world have joined in to uh, watch these amazing eagles raise their young year after year. So we wanna say welcome and hello and welcome to all of our old friends that have been with us for a long time and all of our new viewers too here today. I'm Randy Robinson, Outreach Coordinator here at the NCTC, as we call it for short, National Conservation Training Center. And we'll take you today on a little tour of sort of a little bit of behind the scenes, things that you don't normally see on the Eagle Cam, get you a little bit familiar with uh, some of the terrain and the landscape here at NCTC, uh, but also a little bit about the nest history. We'll catch up on last season just a bit and then talk about the season coming up and help you understand, especially if you're a new person, all of the things that go on uh, during the entire cycle of the year. It really goes year round, but we're in prime time now here in the nesting season. So I wanna say welcome to all. Uh, this is all made possible by the uh, Friends of the National Conservation Training Center and the Outdoor Channel who does all of the streaming. And uh, of course our production crew at NCTC here and all of our staff and everybody that's uh, online and in the chat room on the Live Eagle Cam chat. We've got a great group of people, uh, Bald Eagles 101 folks and others who keep an eye on the questions and you can put questions in there and get them answered. I'll answer your questions here today too. You can put those into the live stream chat room or we're also going out on YouTube live. So either way, we'll answer as many questions as we can. Also wanted to say a special hello to Ms. French and her third grade class at Glenwood Elementary down in the Southern part of the state. I'll be talking with them next week and all of the other uh, teachers and students who might be joining with us today. We're glad to have you here. Thanks for coming. And so a little bit of a recap from last year. As you, as the viewers know, we had uh, two eggs, but only one of them hatched last year. And the uh, young one that grew up and fledged, left the nest, was named Jefferson by our local uh, elementary school. So we're in Jefferson County, so that was a, a great name. Jefferson took off about mid-June, and we hope he's doing well. We saw him a few times uh, later in the summer, July and August, but he's off on his own now, as all young eagles do. So it's been quite a busy season if you weren't around uh, in the fall. Um, sad to say, we lost our resident male who had been with us since uh, 2011, People knew him as Smitty. Well, the last time we saw him was uh, around September um, in the fall, and we believe he might have been a, in a territorial fight. That happens a lot. We've seen it before with both male and female. At any rate, uh, we hope Smitty is well, but, but we can't say. We just don't know what happened to Smitty. Uh, of course, we looked around here for him, but we have a new male came. He came in after Smitty and uh, folks named him Scout. So Scout is easy to identify, easier than Smitty was because he's a young bird. He's got three um, uh, black dots on the top of his head and we'll take a look at those in a little bit. But um, now uh, and just recently, that would be February 27th, the first egg was hatched. And then again on March, first and March 4th. So we've got three eggs this year. And the, uh, I believe that's the female that we're looking at now. 
Uh, Bella is what folks know her by, and she's sitting on three eggs. She might get up and uh, turn those eggs during the time that we're with you. So um, if that happens, uh, our folks in the control room, Rob and Brett, will we'll switch back to that and we'll talk about what's going on. So let me say hello and uh, welcome to some folks on, in the chat room. Pam from uh, Maryland, Harding, Maryland. Deb from all the way up in Alberta, uh, Canada. Deb's been with us for a long time, very active in the chat room, answering questions, posing, posting photos and videos. In fact, we've got a couple of Deb's videos coming up. Uh, Rob, if you cue that first video up, we'll take a look at that in just a little bit. Uh, we've got Nicole from all the way out in Washington State. Um, let's see. We've got Kim from Alaska. Awesome. Thanks for joining us from all the way up there in the great Northwest. And Gail from Dallas, Texas. Welcome back, Gail. You were with us quite a bit last year. Welcome, everybody, and thanks for joining us. So we'll get into, uh, for starters, a little bit of video here. Let's take a look at, um, if you want to play this one, Rob, this was from uh, March 5th, and uh, this is from Deb. So this is the female, Bella, getting off her eggs. Now there's, there's your view of the eggs, three eggs there. So the male and female switch, they trade places. Uh, one gets tired, the other one will come in. But look at the size of her talons, her feet there, big, big feet. She is a larger bird than the male, and that's typical. Females are usually larger than the males by a couple of pounds and maybe, you know, six inches of wingspan. So here comes the new male in. As I, as I mentioned, uh, he's known to our viewers as Scout. If you see um, folks talking about Scout, they mean the male. And when you get a chance, look at the back of his head. Now, this is very likely um, his first uh, uh, time with eggs in his first mating season, that is to say. So those black feathers indicate to us he's between four and six years old. Let's just say five years old for the ease of talking here. And those black feathers are remnants of the dark feathers he had. So bald eagles, and you can see him turning the eggs there with his beak. And look how he's clumping up his, his talons. And he's going to pull a little bit of uh, grass in here. It was a wet day. That little bit of a wiggle that you see him doing, he's getting his brood patch, that is bare skin, right up against the eggs to keep maximum warmth on the eggs for incubation. So he's looking around. He's learning fast, doing a good job uh, for a, a new dad, so to speak, here at the nest. Now, the first uh, few days were a little tricky. Um, we could go, well, let's save that second, um, that second video for a little bit. We'll take a look and uh, we'll, get, we'll hear some vocalizations. Uh, eagles make all kind of interesting sounds. We'll hold that one off for a little bit, Rob. And uh, let's, let me take a couple questions here before we get into some slides. Um, let's see, three, seven. Oh, we're live now. Okay, I'm a little confused here. So, yeah, you just got a chance to see the eggs. And so there's the female, Bella, wiggling around. Again, when they do that, both male and female have a, a bare spot. It's caused by hormonal change. So their feathers drop off when they're just in, some, in a one small spot called a brood patch. Other birds get brood patches too, chicken, duck, turkey, so on. Um, so feathers are good insulators, so if they put feathers up against the eggs, the eggs would be insulated from the body heat. So the purpose of the brood patch is so they can get their skin, which is very warm, right up against the eggs. And by the way, bald eagles are about 100 and have a body temperature of about 105 degrees Fahrenheit. So several degrees, six degrees or more warmer than, than human beings. So they've got to keep those eggs warm for 35 to 38 days. Um, that's the typical incubation period. So I'll get into a couple of questions here from Julia. Um, these came into the chat room earlier. Um, and uh, Julia asked, is it typical to see mating continue as we saw on the nest after Bella produced her first two eggs? And quite frequently too. Yeah, it's not too uncommon, Julia. We've seen that before. 
In fact, in the video that we'll play here after, after a little bit, we're going to see that. And uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that too. So um, not uncommon to see that. Again, it's a, it's a little bit of a hormonal thing. They could see, still have those hormones are running through their bloodstream. So uh, we've seen this pair mating off and on for the last several months. Um, I haven't seen anything, read anything about mating since the third egg was laid. They did make an attempt at the other day. Um, that's what I'll refer to when we see the next video. Why doesn't NCTC do banding of the eaglets? That's a good question. Well, we, we don't really have a need to, and it would cause undue disturbance is, is the short answer. A little bit longer answer is the Fish and Wildlife Service, state, federal agencies, other NGOs have been banding eagles for 30 to 50 years now. When they were on, on the endangered species list, as many of you know, uh, they were on for nearly 30 years. They're off the endangered species list now. They're coming back in a big way thanks to partnerships as, uh, uh, with state, federal agencies, NGOs, but we studied them extensively during that time. We banded many pairs. Uh, we introduced eagles to bring back populations from Alaska, from Canada, from uh, states that had a lot of eagles, some uh, Minnesota, Wisconsin. Eagles were brought into New York, Pennsylvania. And so we had our biologist, Craig Copey, uh, just retired here. I'll mention Craig's name. Craig was very active doing that. We had Craig on as a guest last year. So for many, many years, we banded eagles to track them, to understand their behavior, to understand uh, and know where they were going. But now we, we've got all that data. So it's mostly now it's, it's not necessary. Um, we've got eagle cams where we can watch them 24-7 like we are here. So uh, good questions, Julia. And um, I will save uh, a few more questions for a little bit later. Let's go ahead and get into some slides here. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about, um, if you want to bring up my slides, Rob, we'll give folks a little bit of an overview of um, the Potomac River watershed. So we are in a big watershed here. The Potomac's all the way up. The watershed extends up into uh, Pennsylvania, a large part of Virginia, West Virginia, and Maryland. Big watershed, and eagles are coming back in a big way. And of course, the Potomac goes into Chesapeake Bay and then the Atlantic. So eagles have come back. There are a lot of refuges over that area, in that area. Uh, Blackwater National Wildlife Refuge is one that have a lot of bald eagles. So these eagles are coming back population-wise in a big way. So when we're talking about the eagles here, a lot of the behavior that we talk about you can extrapolate that to other, um, uh, other nests and other eagles in other areas. Every uh, eagle's in the individual, so to speak, but they do have some similarities. So again, we wanna thank the Outdoor Channel for all streaming this for many years, all of our dedicated eagle fans um, and, the, and the friends of NCTC for helping us um, get this out to you today. And, uh, and bringing the eagle cam on for, for many years now, since 2006, actually. So we'll take off on a little view of the NCTC. Here's where we're located uh, map-wise. You see the yellow star along the banks of the Potomac. We're about 70 miles upstream, upriver from Washington, D.C., in the beautiful panhandle of West Virginia, not far from the little town of university town of Shepherdstown, West Virginia. Here's the campus of NCTC. The buildings themselves are, have a fairly small footprint, but the overall campus is about 500 acres. Now, just off to the left of uh, the screen, you can't see it, but that's the tree where the eagle's nest is. So the, the river is about a quarter mile from the eagle's nest. Maryland is on the right-hand side as we're looking at this photo. West Virginia on the left side of the river. And Dam 4 on the Potomac is... Uh, up towards the, the top of the screen. So here's the view that the eagles would see as they fly over our, um, that's our auditorium down below, some of our instructional buildings, beautiful fall shot, uh, and the Potomac in the background. It's the home of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, but since 2003, it's also been the home of this nesting pair of eagles. You can see our signs here says close to entry during the nesting season. That's the tree in the background to the right of the barn. And here's a better view of the tree. Uh, before the leaves are on in the spring, you can see there's a bald eagle setting up at the top. 
The nest is quite large. It's 90 feet up in the tree. Uh, it's probably seven feet across, five feet deep. And so uh, here's a little different shot of Potomac. This is a Google Earth shot. This is where the eagles like to fish. And so there's a fishing weir here. If you look, you see where it says Potomac River at the top of the screen. Just below that, on the right, there is a uh, fishing weir. That, could, that font could be a little bit larger, Rob. Thank you. Um, that fishing weir was made by Native Americans to catch or sort of to trap fish, I should say funnel fish would be a better word, funnel them into a narrow spot to where they could be caught in a net or a basket or speared. That's called a fishing weir. And so this is an area where the eagles uh, do like to fish uh, right below these two islands on the Potomac. So here's some of the very earliest uh, photos that we have of the nest. Um, this was 2003 when the first pair, the original pair, Liberty and Bell, uh, built this nest back then. There they are. Um, you can see the nest was quite a bit smaller than back 20 plus years ago. And so uh, it took a lot of work. You can imagine stick by stick they built that nest. We put a camera up there the, for the first time in 2005. Here's one of the earliest shots in November of 2005 looking directly down onto the nest. You can tell it's a different view from what we have today. But over the years, it's been a very productive nest. 2006, there were three eaglets in there. And again, um, a few months later, those tiny little eaglets are now full-size juvenile eaglets. We were very impressed at what great parents uh, these eagles are. Uh, both the male and the female taking care of the nest through the worst kind of weather. 2007 was a rough year. Uh, 2008, again, we had three eaglets all um, hatched and all fledged. Takes a lot of fish to feed three eaglets. Uh, and Liberty and Bell were very good providers all of those years. Now the technology's greatly improved. Uh, we've got some great high resolution photos. Nice one here by Deb Steck. And uh, our newest cameras, we've got two of them, a wide angle and a, and a tight uh, shot, a close up shot. You can rewind these cameras up to 12 hours. So if you missed something uh, at say um, noon, you can go back almost to midnight and see that. Um, so they will rewind 12 hours and they both stream on YouTube as well. Nice high resolution photos. I mentioned we have two shots, the wide angle in this picture, and then we've got a close up. We've also got links and resources. So when you're on the live cam, if you scroll down to look for links and resources, Friends of NCTC, Deb has put up a nest history and frequently asked questions, very helpful. You'll see lots of photographs like the ones I'm using now, give you a good orientation. The Daily Journal of uh, what's going on every day. And uh, Paul Kolnick with Bald Eagles uh, 101 has put in hatch dates there too. So lots of good information. I've got resources for teachers at the bottom uh, on that same page as well. So you'll find a lot of information there. All of our viewers are great at answering questions. Uh, if you put a question in there, uh, chances are it'll get answered pretty quickly into the chat room. We've even got an infrared light um, on the nest. Now the eagles don't see this, only the camera senses that. So we can see what's going on in the nest at night. Now a lot of people wonder how do we get up there to uh, maintain these cameras. Every fall, we'd only do it in the fall when eagles are not on the nest. We have a friend, Kyle Friend is his name, and he has a tree service company, and that's his truck you see down on the ground, and Kyle's wearing a climbing harness, and he's roped to the end of that crane, which goes up 100 feet. And so uh, Kyle gets up and uh, uh, installs a new camera for us if it needs it, or maintains the old one, uh, the, the two cameras, cleans the lens, you know, checks connections, whatever needs done. Uh, Kyle's the man that takes care of that for us. We're very happy that we have him to do it. And the camera as we have it now is about 95 feet, perfect for a bald eagle selfie looking right into the lens of the camera there with NCTC in the background. Here you can get a good idea of the size of this nest. Like I mentioned, about seven feet across, five feet deep, probably weighs close to a ton, and that's when it's dry. If it's full of uh, snow or wet, it could weigh a lot more. 
So we'll stop right there. Let's take a look at a drone video. We've got some live video here. Uh, we'll get back to the slides in a little bit, but I want to show you a little bit of live, uh, or not live video, but drone video. This is what the eagles would see as they fly out over the islands. Uh, the fishing weir that I showed you a little bit ago in that photo would be uh, right in the area that we're looking at on the left side of the island. So here we're flying towards the Maryland side of the river where the CNO Canal, the Chesapeake and Ohio Canal runs along the river all the way from Washington, D.C. to Cumberland, Maryland. Now we're looking at the West Virginia side of the river. And so um, going downstream, uh, as you, if you were on a canoe or a kayak, going down the river towards Shepherdstown, that's the view that we're seeing right here. So this is the favorite fishing area of our bald eagle pair. And as those young, as the eggs hatch and the young ones um, start to eat fish, uh, this is gonna be their favorite fishing spot and those eagles will be quite busy um, once those eggs hatch. Hopefully they'll hatch. We, we always say hopefully because there's no guarantees. This is a wild nest and I do wanna reiterate, um, these are wild birds. Um, they come and go. Uh, we didn't uh, plan for this nest to be here. They're totally on their own. So um, let me take a look and answer a few questions. I see some on the teleprompter here. Um, what happened to Smitty? Okay, Smitty was the male eagle I mentioned at the beginning. He went missing. Um, if you could scroll to the next question there, uh, Rob. Um, unfortunately, Smitty was our male here from, um, from 2011 until this fall. He went missing. We assume um, probably that was territorial fights, you know, young eagles, they might be younger, healthier than older males, and uh, he might have gotten chased off. That's happened with both males and females, not only at this nest, but many other nests, Washington, D.C., up in Pennsylvania. It's not uncommon. You, you've heard of survival of the fittest. When a young eagle, male or female, reaches mating age, that's about five years old, they get a white head and white tail feathers, they are looking for a nest, they're looking for a mate, they're looking for territory. And sometimes a ready-made nest like this one that's very visible is very appealing to a young male uh, or female. And so the resident female, the original female, got chased off this nest in 2018. Um, that was Belle, and uh, our new female is Bella, uh, named in honor of Belle. But um, you, can, you can understand um, this is not uncommon in the eagle world, and we just have to accept it. Sometimes, you know, it's hard to lose. We, we all were very fond of Smitty, but, but this, is, uh, this is life in the wild. And, um, you know, a lifespan of an eagle might, in the wild might be 25 years. So... Um, you know, young ones take over. That's, that's the way it is. So uh, Teddy's asking, how do you tell a male from a female? Well, the female is usually bigger. Sometimes it's a little hard, Teddy, to tell. But in this, in this case, um, our new male is easy to tell because he's got three black spots. He's five-ish five -ish years of age. And so we can tell him from the three black spots. But, you know, he'll lose those black feathers eventually. But generally speaking, um, the female's bigger than the male if you see the two of them together. And she's got bigger hackles, bigger feet. She's just overall a bigger bird. Hello from Big, uh, Big Elm Elementary School. Awesome. Thanks for joining us today. A uh, question from Gail, thinking mostly about Smitty, but also generally. Do single eagles, if they aren't mated, um, how do single eagles do if they aren't mated with another? Do single eagles do okay on their own? Uh, okay, I see. Good question. Um, yeah, yeah, they can do all their own. And, and those birds might be called floaters. We often refer to them as floaters. That is a bird that doesn't have a mate or a nest. And they're on their own. Yeah, they can, they can fend for themselves. They can, you know, they can hunt and fish on their own. A lot of times after the young birds leave the nest, the juveniles, when they fledge, They'll hang out together uh, because if one um, young bird catches a fish, well, then other birds might get a meal. So there's some strength in numbers. And by the way, um, you might have seen photographs, usually from Alaska, where there might be 50 bald eagles in a, in a, in a tree. 
and you're thinking, well, Randy just told me that they're very territorial and they defend their nest, and that's true during mating season. But when mating season's all done, and if there's plenty of food, those bald eagles might be hanging out in the same tree. They're well fed, there's lots of fish up there. They don't have to fight each other for food. But during, mating, during nesting season and mating season, then they're very territorial. They're gonna fight off other eagles. So uh, that is how it works throughout the year. Okay, um, do we have any more questions in there right now? Not as of right now. Okay, well let me go back into, um, let's play that video here while we're on that topic, Rob. We've got another video to show you uh, from Deb Steck. Just, uh, it was from yesterday. Um, okay, so look at the black spots on the back of the, that's the male right there. If we could turn up the volume on this, Rob, we want to hear the sound on this one. Um, Smitty's doing some vocalizing here. He's looking for the female. He's tired of sitting on the eggs. And we're interpreting uh, bald eagle language, but after 20 years of watching them, uh, we kind of know what, what he's saying in a sense. Here comes the female. Now they're going to trade places. Okay, so the male's on the right. He's got the black on the feathers on the top of his head. There you can see the three eggs. He wants to take off. He wants to stretch out and uh, go down uh, to the river and maybe find some fish or at least get a little break. And now the female is going to come in and take over. But watch what happens next because uh, Julia had the question. Now the female, now we can hear the vocalizing. The female's putting her head down. That's a submissive pose. And the male, they're thinking about mating. They're just thinking about it. But we've seen this before. Um, and that chirping that we hear, we've heard that before. Uh, like we said earlier, they've been mating um, off and on since mm, November. Now uh, the male's gonna fly up on the post out of our view and the female is gonna go on. Look at her talons, how she curls her talons up into a ball. And now she's gonna uh, rotate the eggs and the male just took off. You see his tail feathers take off there. She'll take those eggs with her beak and, and rotate them. They've gotta be evenly, uh, evenly heated. They'll do that about once an hour or so. Um, very gently take the beak and turn them. And um, another reason for doing that is so the membrane of the egg doesn't stick to the inside of the shell. If they stayed in one spot all the time, the, the, uh, that egg shell might stick uh, on the interior of the egg. So even heating and to keep that membrane nice and uh, supple. There she's doing her little wiggle to get the breast, um, the brood patch right up against the egg. So it's always fun and interesting to watch that. And you can see that um, pretty much eh, about once an hour on the average uh, when you watch the live nest. So let's go back into the slides here and we'll talk a little bit about uh, bald eagle behavior and biology, give you a little bit more of an idea of what happens as these young ones uh, grow. So we'll start in the fall here during mating season. Big female on the right, smaller male on the left. Again, the females on the right. Part of their mating ritual, the um, bonding ritual, here the, the females on the left, is to bring sticks in and to build the nest. They do this October, November, December. That's sort of the getting to know each other phase and they build this nest up year after year after year. And the, these nests get quite large as the nest is here at NCTC. And so um, mating uh, happens through the fall and winter. Then they generally lay eggs in mid-February, a little bit late this year. It was towards the end of February, 27th was our first egg this year. But here in the wintertime, you can see on the bird on the right has got its feathers fluffed up to uh, give it extra warmth, extra insulation. But once the eggs are laid, they stay on the nest pretty much all the time. Now, one exception for this year, um, we're, the, the first egg that l was laid might not be viable. It might not have been fertilized. We don't know, can't say for sure until they all hatch. But the night of February 29th, it was quite cold down to 16 degrees and they weren't setting on that egg. Either, either the, um, the eagles realized that egg was not viable, they might have known that, sensed that, or they were worried about other eagles in the territory and they were out chasing them. And at that time, the new male 
might not have understood he was supposed to stay on the nest. That's all conjecture on our part. We're just totally speculating here. At any rate, we know that that one egg wasn't incubated on that cold night, so it might not hatch. We wouldn't be surprised if only two of these eggs hatched. At any rate, once those eggs are there, and like you see them doing now, they're gonna stay on those eggs night and day with brief interludes where they trade places. And uh, if it's raining like it is here in the photo, they'll spread their wings out and make a tent, tenting or a mombrella to keep those eggs warm. They'll turn them like I mentioned every hour. When they get tired, they'll put their head back and chortle to bring the other, uh, that's a, a, a sign to the other bird to come in and change. When they do change, look for them to ball their talons up to protect the eggs. And after about 35, 38 days, this is what we like to see. There's a little hatch right there on the right, the little uh, down covered eaglet, few hours old here, but already strong enough to stand up on its own. And not long after they hatch, just a few hours later, they're gonna get fed little tiny pieces of food. The adults will, uh, fish is their favorite food when they're feeding the young ones. They'll break, uh, pull off a tiny little piece. As the eaglets get bigger, they can get bigger and bigger chunks of food. But when they're small like this, tiny little pieces so they don't choke. Now it's amazing how fast they do grow. And this one's about a week old, maybe 10 days here. It's already the size of a pigeon. It's, it's unbelievable how fast they grow. And you can see the down uh, coat start to get a little bit grayer in color here. Now it's starting to sit up. Its beak is getting bigger. They sleep a lot, they eat a lot. And look at the crop. The crop is an enlarged area of the esophagus on the neck. You see how there's that sort of a bump or a round part on the eagle's neck? It's sleeping here. Well, it's full. It's so full it, it, it just fell, fell over and went to sleep to digest the food. So the crop, um, sometimes you'll see the young eaglets put their head up in the air and kind of look like they're yawning. Well, that forces the crop uh, food in the crop down into their stomach. You'll think they're yawning when they do that. But the crop uh, holds the food until they can um, have room in their stomach to digest it. So they can eat a lot all at once. Again, this is part of their ritual. They might bring a, a stick in at any time. Um, fish is what they bring in a lot when these young ones grow because they eat a lot of fish. Here you can see a nice large sucker that was brought in from the Potomac River. And you can see the uh, black feathers starting on this young bird. Those are called pin feathers, and they have a blood supply in them. Uh, pin feathers are blood feathers. And look how fast the talons grow. This little guy, this is about mid-April. So um, this one's got big talons and a big beak. They grow faster than the rest of the part of their body. And when they're this age, they're kind of clown-like. They stumble around. They're a little bit clumsy. It's kind of comical to watch them. Here you can see the pin feathers coming in quite a lot and their wings are starting to grow here. The wings don't really grow until um, the rest of the body is starting to develop. But like I said, the, the talons in the beaks grow fast and grow first, wings later on. Here the pin feathers are coming in and now by about mid-May, they've got, they're pretty well covered in their adult feathers and these feathers are gonna protect them from wind and rain. Up until they get these feathers, they need to be protected by the adult birds, um, protected from sun, protected from wind and rain, because the down, even though the down feathers that they have when they're first hatched uh, gives them insulation, it doesn't give them any uh, wind or rain or protection. So we'll stop right here and look for some more questions. And um, if you wanna bring up any that we might have on YouTube, um, or in the teleprompter. Let me look into the um, chat room right here and see what we might have. One minute here while I get my slide pulled up. Okay, I'm having a little trouble seeing the chat room. I'll see what's, uh, what's on the teleprompter here. 
If you scroll down a little bit, Rob, let me answer this question first. Another question from Julia, uh, she'd ask earlier, under what federal or state statutes are individuals not permitted to assist when eagle, eagle or eaglets are in obvious distress? Well, um, that's, that's a kind of a complicated question, but I'll give some simple answers for it. Um, all of the states, West Virginia here, for example, the state DNR is responsible for the animals in their state. Bald and golden eagles are protected since 1940 under the Bald and Golden Eagle Protection Act. And uh, they were under the Endangered Species Act for 30 years as well now, no longer under the Endangered Species Act because they're coming back. There are no, and I'm not an expert on all the legalities. I'll tell you that we have a division of migratory birds uh, at our headquarters. They, those folks are the experts. Um, they just had a week of training on um, bald eagle and golden eagle regulations. So I don't want to speak for them. But as far as I know, there aren't specific um, statutes. It's more a matter of what's reasonable to do, whether it's a state agency or federal agency, an NGO. For example, down in Tennessee uh, last year, those of you that saw it, two, two eaglets got tangled up, uh, unfortunately, in a bunch of fishing line. Fishing line's very dangerous for, for birds, uh, eagles, just birds and wildlife in general. So um, fortunately, uh, there was a, a, a climber able to get up into the nest and um, rescue the eaglets, but one of them did succumb to, the, to an injury, sadly. One did survive, but um, that rescue happened relatively quickly. There's been other incidents with rodenticides, poisons. Um, it's uh, especially, in, we've seen it in Florida where um, a rat might be brought into the nest as a food source but the rat was um, picked up. It had poison in its bloodstream. Other examples, uh, lead poisoning, shots, ammo. There's all kinds of um, uh, dangers out there, um, some human caused and some animal caused. But to make a, uh, uh, without getting into all these rules and regulations, I'll simply say that every nest is, is its own case. I don't want to get into generalizations, but we have to take each each nest on its own. This nest, for example, is 90 feet up in a tree, and if something happened to one of those eaglets and we went up and tried to do something, there's a good chance we're gonna scare those adults away. So we always have to weigh, are we doing more harm than good? Um, and that's often what it comes down to in a nest, is are we gonna do more harm than good? Nobody wants to see an eaglet die, but losing one eaglet might be, would be better than losing three eaglets uh, if the uh, adults were to abandon a nest. So uh, kind, of, uh, kind of a complicated question there, um, but I guess it's the best thing to say is every, um, every incident would have to be looked at on its own, on its own merits. And we always, uh, we never want to do uh, more harm than good for any, any wildlife. So we had a question on social media about how bright the light looks at night and if it's okay for the eagles. That is an infrared light and it is pretty bright, yeah, but, but eagles and humans don't see it. If you were here at NCTC and went out and looked at that tree, you would not see a light. Only, um, only the camera senses that light. The camera senses that light, um, humans, and birds, other animals, do not see infrared light. You might have heard it called night vision. Uh, the military uses uh, night vision goggles to enable them to see at night. That's infrared light. It's not in the visible light spectrum that we can see. So I just missed that last question. Oh, is it? I think it was, uh, are three eggs uncommon? Um, not, we've had five different years, actually six now at NCTC, where we've had three um, eggs laid. Last year in Pennsylvania, there were four eggs laid. Four is very uncommon. Three is not so uncommon, but only out of those six years, out of those five years, only two of those have had um, three eggs 
hatch and three eggs fledge. So it's pretty tough to, um, to have three eggs successfully reared until they uh, fledge. So next question from Deb, are there any other bald eagle nests nearby? There is one not too far from here, Deb, uh, but they're not going, I'm not sure there's any eagles on it. There was a nest built. It's not far from where I live. As you, if you're going down the river, it's a good six miles because there's a big bend in the river here. But so far as we know, that is the closest one. And as far as we know, those eagles, um, they're not going back and forth at all. None on the other side of the river. I've been down the river many, many times, and uh, we have not seen other. Now, if you go farther downstream from Shepherdstown, um, yes, there's eagle nests down there, especially around Harper's Ferry. Um, and uh, the Shenandoah River comes into the uh, Potomac at Harper's Ferry, and there are quite a few nests down there. But the closest one uh, to this nest would be, uh, like I mentioned, not too far from where I live. And I haven't seen any eagles on that this year, so I'm not, there's no camera on that, so not sure what's going on with that nest. Okay, let me go in and uh, finish up the, um, the last part of our, our slides here. And let's see where we are. A year in the life. Yeah, we'll finish talking about bald eagle behavior. Um, I mentioned they're very territorial, very good protectors of the nests. That's what these uh, eagles are doing here. Look, they're looking up in the air. They see another eagle going over the nest. They're going to squawk and make all kind of racket. And if that doesn't scare off the, uh, the other bird, then one of them's going to take off and chase that other bird away. Whether it's a, a hawk, an owl, another eagle, a uh, vulture, whatever it might be. Um, they're very good protectors of their nests. And when we get about into mid-May, we often see this. We've got a, uh, a young bird here. He still can't fly. He's pretty good size. He's going to do a lot of wing exercising. Jumping up and down, especially on a windy day, flapping their wings, getting the feel of the wind under the wings. You can see how big those talons are. Almost a full-sized eagle here but they're not going to get a white head or white tail feathers until they're five years of age. You can see there's a good bit of white under their wings, and they do change colors, um, feather colors or plumage colors. I'll show you a slide of that in a little bit. But there's the outstretched wings, getting the feel, windsurfing we call it, getting the feel. When they get brave enough, they get up on top the lookout post. Um, this would be maybe towards the end of May or early June. Generally, they fledge or leave the nest in, in mid-June. If it's a rainy day, they hang their wings out to dry, so to speak, spread their wings out, let the wind and the sun dry them off. There you can see the pin feathers or the flight feathers. We'll be seeing a lot of this. If you're an active viewer of the nest, you'll see this. Here, this is uh, the young one on the left is a female. Look how big she is compared to the, the male. This happens to be Smitty. Uh, um, from this is a shot from 2019 that's Smitty on the right and uh, the young ones learn to be very aggressive with their food even though uh, it was one of their um, their adult parents that brought the food in they're going to grab it they're going to hunch over it and mantle it we call making a spreading themselves out over the food to grab it that's a survival technique they have to be aggressive with food because when they go out on the wild um, they have um, they need to be aggressive. If one bird gets some food, another bird's going to kind of try to come along and take it away. So they need to protect food when they get it. Here's what we like to see about mid-June. The fledge has happened. About 9 o'clock on that photo is the young bird. It's flown out of the nest and landed on a limb. The adults are in the nest. You can see the white-headed adult bird up about 11 o'clock and then uh, another white-headed adult about 3 o'clock in that photo. So once they fledge, they do come back to the nest for a couple of months. You know, in July and August, we might see the young ones along. They associate the nest with food, but by the end of the summer, they're going to be off on their own. And here's how their feather plumage changes over time. There's a six-month-old eaglet on the upper left, all dark, dark brown or almost black. At a year and a half old, they almost look like a golden eagle. They've got that coloration. Kind of hard to tell them apart. A golden eagle, though, does, has feathers on its uh, lower legs. A bald eagle 
does not. Its talons are bare, a uh, nice golden yellow color. Not only do their feathers change, but their eye color and their beak color changes. Look at that one that's a half year old, dark eyes, dark beak. Look what happens when it's um, four and a half to five years old. That gold, beautiful golden eye and a golden beak color. When they get to be about three and a half years old, we sometimes call them a dirty bird. They look like they stuck their head in the mud because their feathers, the white feathers are coming in, but they still have dark feathers. So that's what our new guy here has, Scout. He's got just a little bit of his dark feathers left. So we can say, fortunately, the bald eagles, the populations are coming back, a true conservation success story. Partners in state, federal, uh, non-governmental organizations. Our rivers have been cleaned up. We've had laws passed to protect eagles. They're coming back in a big way. We've got uh, the ban on DDT and the Clean Water Act in 1972. The Endangered Species Act did a lot to help these uh, birds come back. Reintroductions I mentioned from Canada to Alaska. Protections on refuges. So bald eagles are doing very well now. We can help them out by learning about them like we're doing now picking up litter, especially fishing line and tackle. If you're out in the outdoors, please help us out there by picking up litter. Reduce, reuse, recycle, save energy. That always helps um, not, not only us humans save money, but it helps wildlife. Limit rodenticides, other poisons in the environment. Bad for all animals, uh, eagles and other birds of prey hunt them. And hunters using non lead ammo uh, because bald eagles and other raptors uh, can get uh, lead poisoning off of that. So with that, I will uh, leave it up. There's my email address, randy underscore robinson at fws.gov. If you'd like to send me um, any questions or thoughts, be happy to do that on email. I'm going to get back to a few more questions here uh, before we wrap up today. We're, we're getting a little bit into our time here. Uh, Michelle is saying, um, I always thought the curve of the beak was the difference of the male and female. I didn't think it was their size, thanks. Um, yeah, that, that, that's a little bit hard to tell, Michelle. The curve of the beak, um, when, uh, when we had our male and female last year, her beak was a little bit different. Very subtle though, very hard to tell. The, this year, the, if you see the two of them together, her, the female's head and neck are just bigger overall. Than, than the male. His neck is kind of longer, skinnier, but just size-wise in general, and that's true with, uh, with other birds of prey as well. The female's usually bigger. The reason being, she's got more body heat. She's gonna be the one that's incubating, especially it's very cold at night. Um, any kind of cold weather, she's gonna be on the eggs. More mass means more body heat. She's better at keeping the eggs warm than the male would be. Being a, he's a little smaller, he's a little more agile, he's a little bit better at catching fish, and so 80% of the time he's gonna be fishing, bringing fish back, but both of them can fish, catch fish, both of them can set on and incubate the eggs. It's just one is a little bit better than the other uh, body size wise. Do we have other questions there in the, um, in the chat room, Rob. I'm, I, I'm sorry, I can't see live stream here. My, uh, my iPad won't bring it up. Um, scroll back just a little bit. Uh, oh, no other questions. Okay, very good. Well, with that then, um, we'll start to wrap it up here. I do want to say, make sure you tune in on Friday, March 22nd. That'll be our next live from the Eagle's Nest program. Our senior producer here, Brett Billings, will be your host. And Brett will have our guest biologist from the uh, West Virginia DNR talking about uh, bald eagle populations around the state. Uh, he's an ornithologist, very knowledgeable on all kinds of birds throughout West Virginia. So that'll be March 22nd. And if you are within the... Um, area here, the Eastern Pandal, Shepherdstown area, I should say, NCTC, the National Conservation Training Center, is going to have an open house, and that's going to be on May 11th, that's Saturday, May 11th, the day before Mother's Day, and the open house will run from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., and so we welcome our friends and neighbors from uh, the surrounding area, 
Um, if you're in Winchester, Virginia, Frederick, Maryland, uh, that's those, those towns are 30 miles away, cities are 30 miles away. But if you're gonna be in the area, um, stop by, it's free, it's open to the public. Again, that's open house at NCTC May 11th uh, from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. So with that, we will wrap it up here. Um, looking, at the, uh, looking at our live shot of our nest at 1.50 p.m., uh, that would be the female on the nest right there doing her duty, incubating those eggs. And so I'll sign off. Randy Robinson here saying so long from the National Conservation Training Center. Thanks, everyone, for joining us today, and we'll see you next time.